watching CBS 12 News, the one to turn to. And now at 6.30, what a weekend. Plenty of sun and some nice temperatures as we take a live look right now. This is our Kravis camera from downtown West Palm Beach. But, yes, there's always a but, right? Big changes could be on the way for the week ahead. So let's get in uh, touch with Michael Ehrenberg now with the weather. Hey there, Paul. Yeah, we do have high pressure in control. Gave us that nice weekend. By the way, there are some showers down across the Bahamas. More on that in just a moment. However, during the mid to late part of the week, we are already looking at our next weather maker. Right now, it's a low pressure area over the western U.S. with a warm front and a cold front. That's going to be coming our way and ganging up with other moisture later in the week to increase our rain chances, especially Friday and Saturday. In the meantime, great day. This is Boca Bass. Look at all the boats there at uh, Lake Boca this afternoon in South County with all the sunshine out there. Nothing going on on radar locally. However, down across the Bahamas, showers and storms here. The good news with this is our short range HRR model takes this and kind of spins it or scoots it underneath us during the overnight hours. Now during the morning tomorrow though, there can be a couple spotty showers coming in on the easterly flow as you'll see there. So rain chances up a little bit tomorrow to 20%. Coming up in minutes, we'll track that next weather maker late in the week. I got more on the increasing moisture, and I'll time out the rain chances for Thursday, Friday, Saturday when I come back with your seven-day forecast. And as Michael just said, a beautiful day to be on the water this Sunday. Look at that. The Boca Bash boat party underway. Thousands taking to the waters of the Intracoastal for the 10th annual party on the water. But there's plenty of law enforcement out there as well, hoping to avoid the tragedy of last year. You may remember this. A 32-year-old father at the event drowned. Well, the search for possible suspects intensifies tonight after a shooting in West Palm Beach that left two men dead and another man fighting for his life. Now, West Palm Beach police telling us it was not random. Instead, a targeted attack. It happened last night in the parking lot of the Palm Groves Apartments. That's right off Australian Avenue, north of Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. Officers arriving on scene spotted a car speeding off. And once they stopped that car, three people inside, one taken into custody, two others took off running. Now at the scene last night, as you can imagine, emotions running high. Take a listen. This is ridiculous. This is the same neighborhood. It keep getting shot at. Why did he wear security? Why is there no enforcement? Right now, no word on any identities or a motive in the case. Police telling me a short time ago they don't expect new information for, quote, quite some time. Anyone with information is urged to call the West Palm Beach Police Department. One of the women at the center of the Jupiter Spa sex probe is expected back in court tomorrow. Lawmakers for Lei Wang have filed a motion for a protective order. And last week, attorneys for Wang and Hua Sang filed emergency motions asking the judge to find prosecutors and police in contempt of court over a possible leak of the undercover video. Now, the judge declined to find in contempt, but asked for an accounting of evidence procedures on selling, uh, sealing the video evidence. And the legal team for Patriots owner Robert Kraft expected back in court Tuesday. Last week, they grilled the lead detective in the case for six hours. They're fighting to get the video evidence allegedly showing Kraft and dozens of other men paying for sex acts thrown out. The Kraft defense team says the search warrant used was unconstitutional. His legal team also pointing out that Orchids of Asia offered Groupon and early bird specials and was once even promoted on the Town of Jupiter's website. Well, we are just days away now from the start of Sunfest. Can you believe it? And road closures? Yes, they are already in place in downtown West Palm Beach. So let's get over to Traffic Jam Sam now with a look at what you can expect this week. Sam? Road closures went into place on Wednesday and will remain in place until the Wednesday after Sunfest ends. So as you head out for your Monday morning commute, Flagler Drive is shut down in both directions between Banyan Boulevard and Lakeview Avenue. There are also small portions of Narcissus Avenue, Clematis Street and Evernia Street that are shut down. Your major alternate through the area is going to be Quadrille Boulevard. Plus, the road work on I-95 between Palm Beach County and Martin County continues this week. I'll have everything you need to know before you head out the door tomorrow on CBS 12 News this morning, starting at 4.30 a.m. Sam, get some rest. We'll see you then. All right, terrifying moments when a crane comes crashing down on cars. Now the investigation on how it could happen. And Operation Varsity Blues, actress Lori Laughlin expected back in court tomorrow. Why, she claims she's not guilty. And Horses Healing Hearts, yes, the unique program right here in our area helping young people overcome addiction. That and more after the break. 
proud partner of the CBS 12 News Network, the one to turn to. Welcome back and new tonight. It is a huge problem plaguing Palm Beach County that doesn't appear to be going away anytime soon. The country, I'm sorry, the county ranked number two in the entire state when it comes to homeless youth and runaway teens. And today, the only shelter for, the, for this at-risk group reaffirming their mission to the community. CBS 12's Nyala Charles at that ribbon cutting, ribbon cutting ceremony today. And Nyala, a really big problem here in the county. Well, Paul, since it's the only homeless shelter in the county that caters to homeless kids, the donors say that's why the need is so great. They got together, raised $75,000 to help what they say is a huge problem in our county. The fact that so many kids don't have a place to sleep at night. This is what it looks like now at Safe Harbor, thanks to 21 people in the community who came together to raise money for the upgrade. Safe Harbor is a refuge for homeless kids for up to a month with hope of reuniting them with family. And there are a lot of kids. Palm Beach County ranked number two in the entire state when it comes to homeless youth and runaway teens. It used, they say it used to look very dreary and they wanted a better opportunity to show the kids that they can call this place home. But now with its bright colors and inspirational quotes, they say the facility is much more equipped to help kids through what is a difficult time. And this type of job comes from love. And we needed to inspire them and let them know that we stand for families reuniting with their children. The organization says the quicker kids are put in a safe space, the less chances they have of being human trafficked. Safe Harbor helps kids from ages 10 to 17. It says kids become homeless for many different reasons, most of which they say start from a lack of love or problems at home. The project has taken months to finish, so they're very happy that it is now complete for now. But they say they still need a lot of help. They say if you would like to donate to help with what they say is a need for more caseworkers, in the facility. We have a web, uh, we have a link to that on our website at cbs12.com and you can do that there. For now, reporting live from West Palm Beach, Nyella Charles, CBS 12 News. Let's hope those numbers of homeless youth go down, Nyella. Thank you. Meantime, researchers in Maryland now analyzing national mortality data that says there's been a surge in drug-related death rates among teens and young adults during the last decade, especially when it comes to opioids. Now, it's estimated that drug-related premature deaths in 2015 ran upwards of $35 billion in work and quality of life costs alone. And there's new hell for young people fighting addiction in Delray Beach. The nonprofit organization Horses Healing Hearts helps children whose loved ones, helps families whose loved ones have suffered or are struggling from addiction. Now, one volunteer says this helped her cope when she was a child. Why? Well, she says it promotes self-confidence. We teach them life coping skills, we teach them how to deal with really stressful situations and that it wasn't their fault that their parents were addicted and that if they still are. Because a lot of kids, they try to put it on themselves. Now the group is raising money to introduce this program as well as educate the public about the benefits of horse therapy. Now it's on May 7th from 10 a.m. in the morning to 1 p.m. It's be at Horses Healing Hearts, the address right there on your screen in Delray. And you can find more details, of course, on our website, cbs12.com. A dramatic rescue just wrapping up, saving five men. Here it is, trapped in a cave in Virginia. And the healing begins as we learn more about the shooter behind a deadly attack at a California synagogue. Plus, in sports, Dolphins general manager, yeah, he's laying it all out there. Chris Greer tonight explaining his thought process behind the picks and what he plans to do in next year's draft. How about just for tonight and tomorrow, Michael? Hey, Paul, beautiful out there right now across South Florida, but I've already got my eye on our next weather maker. Lots of moisture and a low pressure area over the western U.S. Uh, the timing of the rain in the South Florida when I come back with your seven-day forecast. Welcome back across America right now. Investigators are searching for more evidence and clues following yesterday's attack by a gunman at a synagogue in Poway, California. That is just about 25 miles to the north of San Diego. The suspect, John Ernst, has been charged with murder in connection with those shootings in which a woman was killed, three others injured. Jonathan Bigliotti is outside the synagogue tonight with the latest. 
Authorities have charged the alleged gunman in the attack with one count of murder and three counts of attempted murder. Police say 19-year-old John Ernest walked into the Chabad Synagogue near San Diego with an assault weapon Saturday morning and began shooting. 60-year-old Lori Gilbert Kay died from her wounds at a nearby hospital. Three others, Rabbi Israel Goldstein, another adult male, and a young girl were injured in the attack. He, he came in to kill. You know, at first we thought that those are light bulbs, like bursting in the synagogue or something, you know. And then we found out it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a shooter. Police say after the attack, Ernest fled the scene and later called 911, surrendering in his car. As our officer was exiting the freeway, he clearly saw the suspect in his vehicle. Suspect pulled over, jumped out of his car with his hands up, and was immediately taken into custody. Investigators have been searching Ernest's home, looking for evidence and a motive into the shooting that happened on the last day of Passover. It was like, like, like this, and just shooting, 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 shooting like crazy, just spraying. Authorities say Ernest posted a rambling, hate-filled manifesto on the internet, in which he claims responsibility for a recent mosque arson. No one was injured in the fire. He's now also a suspect in that case. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Poway, California. And Jonathan, the Poway synagogue attack happening six months to the day after the Tree of Life massacre in Pittsburgh that left 11 worshipers dead there. Remembrances are being held this weekend for that tragedy. Right now, an all-day rescue effort finally ending in southwest Virginia after six men got trapped in a cave. One able to escape and go to for help. Rescue crews working all day to pull the five remaining men to safety. Now, those men had actually been stuck inside this cave. Look at this. Since Friday night, rescue squads had to use ropes, pulleys, and a stretcher to get the men out of the cave. More than 12 rescuers at a time actually went inside the cave to pull those men out. Crews starting to clear the way for the wreckage overnight following a deadly crane collapse in Seattle. Take a look at this video. By daylight today, the cars and most of the cranes were cleared from the roadway. Four people killed when that crane fell at a building under construction on the new Google Seattle campus. Now, the Seattle Fire Department says two workers in the cab of the crane were killed, as well as two people in cars on the ground. Actress Lori Laughlin and her husband, along with several other defendants in the Varsity Blues college admission scandal, expected back in court tomorrow. The Laughlins, of course, have pleaded not guilty. Their defense that she claims they didn't know what they were doing was wrong. All right, we turn now to weather. What we know we're doing is right. The here. timing. Yeah, the timing for the weather, yeah? yeah look at, the, look yeah. at this. Look at all the people on the beach. Beautiful. Yeah, great beach weather. Of course, Boca Bass look nice today, Paul, mm -hmm. right? We had right. the Sweet Corn Fiesta at the fairgrounds. Plenty of stuff to do out there. Yeah, plenty of stuff to do. And I think for the most part, nice weather coming up for the next couple of days and then changes later in the week. So if you do have beach plans, like folks here in Delray, you'll be enjoying it for tomorrow. Although there'll be a few more clouds and a 20% shower chance. For the most part, drier hills on, but we are tracking again our next weather maker. This is a combination of things. An upper level trough over the northern U.S. We've got a surface low here and moisture will creep in from the east. So later on in the week, we take you to Wednesday, still mostly dry for Wednesday. We head on to Thursday, moisture begins to creep through the Bahamas and then it enters South Florida, deeper moisture for both Friday and on into Saturday. So you increase the moisture, you get a front coming and rain chances will naturally go up. They will go up a little bit tomorrow to 20%. So don't be surprised to get a little quick moving shower both tomorrow and uh, Tuesday morning. And then rain chances up to 40% Thursday, 50% Friday and Saturday, and 30% Sunday. Uh-oh, this is actually when Sunfest starts. So if you're going to Sunfest Thursday, and especially Friday, Saturday, you might have that umbrella handy with you just in case. Certainly won't cancel your plans. Most of the time it will be dry, but spotty showers and storms, unfortunately, the timing bad again for Sunfest this year. In the meantime, a great day out there. Again, there's a shot of jam-packed Lake Boca with a Boca Fest this afternoon. Great temperatures, 81 in Boca. Delray, you're 79. Lake Worth, 80. Hello to you in Jupiter. Temperature, 80 for you under sunny skies. Vero Beach at 80 degrees and out there near the lake, a little warm there, 81 in Belle Glade, as well as in Okeechobee City. Now, out the coast again tonight, it'll be mild, low to mid-70s, Lake Worth to Boca, but inland, mid to upper 60s. We're expecting 69 in Royal Palm, about 66 in the farms, 73 muggy degrees in West Palm, and mostly 60s for those of you on the Treasure Coast. And yeah, there could be a little spotty shower here there, especially South Palm Beach County. There's 6.30 in the morning, so don't be surprised if, again, you get a brief shower here with rain chances of 20%, and then similar weather as we head on into Tuesday. 
Hour by hour for tomorrow, again at the coast, 70s in the morning, we rise to 80 by 10 o'clock, and we stay in the 80s right on through the early part of the evening. Now, because of the winds tomorrow, still modestly gusty like they were today at 12 to 18, we're looking at a moderate rip current risk with the seas winding from 2 to 4 feet. So the winds again, 12 to 18 tomorrow, but on Tuesday, winds could gust between 15 and 20, with winds gusting 20 to 25, and maybe even gust past 30. For Wednesday afternoon and Thursday, that's going to increase the seas and lead to an elevated rip current risk. Meanwhile, forecast again for tonight, mainly clear. Again, some of you at the coast getting an isolated shower overnight. Low 70s at the coast, 60s inland. Your Monday back to work and school tomorrow. Nice day overall, but again, a few clouds out there, especially in the morning. Do allow for a quick shower or downpour with that gusty east wind at 12 to 18. Seven day forecast for your weekends, always in view. Breezy conditions Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In fact, we'll call it downright windy. Warming temperatures, again, that increase in shower and storm chances for Thursday and especially next Friday and Saturday. An update at 11. We'll see you then. Now, the South Florida Honda Sports Report. So far this year, Ryan Palmer's best finish on the PGA Tour is third place. Granted, he's paired up with John Ram today. The duo have the chance to win the Zurich Classic. Taking you to the final round here, Ram and Palmer on 10. Ram draining the birdie putt. The duo moves to 24 under. But right on their heels is Sergio Garcia and Tommy Fleetwood. Garcia off the green, and he knocks it in for birdie. The pair moves to 22 under. But Palmer and Ram continue to push nearly Holes out here, but oh, so close. Leaves a tap in birdie for Palmer to move to 25 under. The duo go on to win the Zurich Classic, finishing at 26 under. Palmer with his first victory this year on the PGA Tour, even if it's a shared victory. FAU running back Kareth White had to wait three long days to hear his name called in the NFL draft, but my personal guess is the wait was worth it. The Seminole Ridge graduate was drafted by the Chicago Bears in the seventh round on Saturday. White had a respectable redshirt junior season, netting 866 rushing yards and eight touchdowns. He's gone from having only one offer out of high school to the offer from the Bears. And bonus, he's been to the Windy City before. I actually visited up there a couple uh, summers ago, and you know they, you know, the deep fried pizza and all that's good stuff. So I'm, I'm actually kind of familiar, familiar with uh, Chi Town. Once I got the call, I was very thankful for the opportunity in the uh, Bears organization, you know, for reaching out and uh, giving me that opportunity. And you know, we just all celebrated here, and you know, this is only the start, so we're very appreciative. White isn't the only local player heading to the NFL. Royal Palm Beach graduate Jimmy Moreland was drafted by the Redskins. Former Oxbridge Academy star Travis Homer was selected by the Seahawks. FAU's Devin Singletary was drafted by the Bears. And Palm Beach Gardens graduate Tavon Coney was signed by the Raiders as an undrafted free agent. Well, how about them Dolphins? How did they do in the 2019 NFL draft? Dolphins ended up with six selections, guys that have starting potential, whether it's on offense or on defense. And while that was one of the known goals of Miami is getting guys that have immediate impact or would have an immediate impact on the team, the other was setting the team up for success in the future. For us, adding picks for next year as we started going through it. Uh, like you said, the compensatory part as we're building here together, we're getting the, our staff, the personnel coaches. It's, so for us going forward, uh, the plan was to get as many picks as we can going forward to see the, to build this thing right. And, uh, and then after that, we'll just see where it goes. We feel good. We've addressed uh, some uh, holes in the roster maybe that we may have, but uh, again, a lot of work to be done still. Of course, another the other major story coming out of Miami's draft is quarterback Josh Rosen. Head coach Brian Flores made it very clear that there are no known starters right now. Rosen will have to earn that starting spot. And finally, tonight, our own John Evanson was MC this afternoon at the second annual Kayla Cares for Kids Bowling Bonanza at Revolutions in downtown West Palm Beach. A fantastic children's charity started by Kayla Abramowitz when she was just 11 years old. The now 16-year-old suffers from several autoimmune diseases, as does her younger brother, Ethan. And they wanted to make Kids Hospital stay 
a little more bearable. What started out as a goal to collect 100 DVDs has turned into 22,000 movies, video game consoles, and books collected for children's hospitals across the country. Today, Kayla raised thousands of dollars for her Kayla Cares for Kids charity. So great. Love it is, that. It is a wonderful program. And yeah. you know what? Jo John's been talking about it for a while. Now. Yeah. Here's Michael. Nice cause. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, fairly quiet for tonight. Treasure Coast, low temperatures dropping into the upper 60s. Now, especially in South Palm Beach County, there could be a few spotty showers. And they'll be lingering 20% chance tomorrow and Tuesday at the coast in the morning. Not much. We get breezier, downright windy. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, increasing rain chances Thursday and on into next weekend. Not a bad forecast and a great yeah. weekend, too. We'll give you all the credit. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Will you time. give them credit, too? <laughs> I'll give them credit. Why not? <laughs> sure, I'll take it. <laughs> all right, thank you for joining us on this Sunday night. Of course, 60 Minutes is next, and we hope to see you right back here tonight for CBS 12 News at 11. Till then, have a good evening.